Hi, I'm Alex from DIY Composites, and in this video, we're going to be making a single piece fiberglass mold using our DIY eco mold system. From that, we're then going to infuse a component in carbon fiber in a later video to make a heel rest for this Sim Dynamics simulator setup. Our eco mold system is fantastic for making components using the wet lay process or the infusion process, as we will later on but can also be used for short run, out of autoclave, pre-preg curing. This is the first of two parts, so we'll make the mold in this video and we're gonna infuse our part in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more composite videos like this and full instructions and processing guides for all of our materials are available on our website. So we're working with an aluminium pattern today. We've got a long length because we're going to cure a single piece of carbon in this length, uh, which we can then chop up into a number of pieces to make our final component. The, the mould that we make from this pattern is going to be a single piece mould because it's not a complex shape. Um, and it's worth mentioning at this stage, uh, take a bit of time to prepare the surface of your pattern because the surface finish on your pattern will be directly reflected in your finished mould. So effort at this point is well worth it because it will just save rework down the line. Also worth mentioning, we're going to be making uh, a slightly bigger mould than the finished piece that we need because it's going to be an infusion mould. So we need to make sure we've allowed enough space around the periphery of the mould to accommodate all of your infusion ancillaries. So the next step in the process is we need to make sure that we've applied our release agent to the pattern so that when our mould is cured, it comes away cleanly. We're going to be using our DIY let go release agent today, which is a semi-permanent release agent, which we found gives really consistent releases. Um, it's also completely acceptable and more cost effective to use uh, a release wax and PVA combination or just a release wax combination. So now getting to the more exciting stages of applying our first gel coat to the pattern. It's going to be the first of two gel coats and we're going to be using our DIY VE tooling gel coat which is green in colour and it's a vinyl ester gel coat so it gives a durable mould surface that's really easy to polish to a high shine uh, and the colour of it makes placement of dark cloths really easy to position. Uh, we're going to be applying the gel coat to the tack stage and then applying a subsequent gel coat to the tack stage and then putting our first light layer of reinforcement with fibreglass onto the gel coat surface. Thoroughly mix your MEKP catalyst into the gel coat. We're using a 2% mix here. If you want longer work time, mix at 1.5%. Apply your gel coat in smooth, even brush strokes, making sure you get nice coverage across the whole pattern. Don't be too concerned if you can see a few small areas opening up with the gel coat separating from the pattern that's just the efficiency of the release agent underneath. That will all get covered with a second application of gel coat. And always make sure when applying your gel coat and subsequent polyester and vinyl ester resins to do it in a well ventilated area. We've now applied our first coat of gel coat to the pattern and we're going to leave it to go to the tack stage. It's really important that we monitor this closely because if we allow it to cure too far, the second coat of gel coat won't adhere well to the first. The first gel coat is now at the tack stage, which is when you can lightly draw a finger across the surface of the gel without any gel coat coming away on your finger. But if you pushed hard, you would leave an imprint. It's now time to apply our second gel coat in just the same way as we did the first. Nice, smooth, even brush strokes, making sure to get coverage across the whole pattern surface and making sure that there's no areas of exposed pattern remaining. Just as with the first gel coat layer, we're now going to allow this second gel coat to come to the tack stage before we add our first layer of light reinforcement. With the second layer of gel coat, now at the tack stage, it's time to put on our first layer of reinforcement. We're going to do that in two steps. The first, a lightweight surface tissue, followed up with a 300 gram CSM cloth. We're going to wet that out with our DIY VE120 vinyl ester laminating resin. The purpose of this reinforcement is to support the back of the gel coat to give you a nice durable mold life, but also to provide a nice surface for the main reinforcement to bond to. At the end of this step, we can let this come to full cure overnight before adding the main reinforcement to the back of our mold. 
paint a thin layer of the VE120 resin onto the tacky surface of your gel coat prior to adding the first surface tissue reinforcement. So we've now added a thin layer of VE120 laminating resin across the tacky surface of our gel coat pattern. So it's next time to get our surface tissue and add that onto the surface and wet it out using a laminating brush and a roller if required. With your surface tissue and your 300 gram CSM cloth in place and thoroughly wet out using a stippling action and a laminating brush, make sure that there's no air bubbles present in the laminate. If there are, and they will show as a small white circle, these can be expelled easily with the use of a bristle roller. So we've now completed the first stage of our mould reinforcement. We fully wet out the surface tissue and 300 gram CSM and we've made sure that there is no air entrapment in the laminate at all. So the next job is to let that cure overnight so that we continue the reinforcement tomorrow. It is worth mentioning at this stage, you could oversize your cloths on this job and then cut back later. For efficiency though, we have cut to size. We're now ready to add the main reinforcement to the back of our mould. We're going to do that with a heavier 450 gram chop strand mat and also the DIY PO80 polyester tooling resin. We can complete this bulking in either a single laminating session or a double laminating session. Today we're going to use a single laminating session and just add four plies wet on wet of the 450 gram matting. If you want extra tool thickness and strength, you can go for two, three ply sessions and complete it that way. After completing the wet out, and the laminating, we leave it for 24 hours to fully cure before demoulding. Quickly key the surface of your laminate with 120 grit paper just to take out any loose fibres that could hold off the laminate that's going to be added on top and give a nice keyed surface for the polyester resin to bond to. We mix the polyester PO80 tooling resin at 1.5% catalyst and then apply a thin and even layer across the surface of the keyed mould. Use your laminating brush and your PO80 tooling resin to thoroughly wet out the 450 gram chop strand mat. As you apply each layer, make sure to use your bristle roller to thoroughly expel any trapped air before adding the following ply. So our bulking plies are fully wet out now and all the air expelled. Next thing to do is wait 24 hours before demolding. So our mold's now at full cure and it's time to get it broken off of the pattern. After that, we're going to be trimming the edges and polishing the surface, ready to make our component later on. It's at this point, if we were going to do a post-cure, we'd do so for eight hours at 50 degrees. However, we're going to be using our mould for the infusion process at ambient temperature, so it's completely acceptable to carry on without a post-cure. Using a demoulding wedge and a soft hammer, gently work the wedge between the mould surface and the pattern, and slowly work yourself around the pattern, releasing it as you go. Our mould's now ready for its final trim, which we're going to use a rotary tool and a permagrip cutting wheel, which will make easy work of tidying up the edges. Our mould's now ready for its final polish. Our pattern's given us a fantastic surface to work with, so we're going to go straight into using our Just One cutting compound to give our final polish for it. If the surface isn't so good, you can wet sand through to a 1500 grit paper the coarser you start, the more work you'll have to do to get to your final polish. So just be wary and make sure you don't go through your gel coat. We've finished polishing our mould surface now and we've got a fantastic surface to make our components from. All that's left to do is use our DIY Tool Sealer 12 to seal the tool and then add our release agent and we'll be ready to make components. I hope you've enjoyed our video using DIY Eco Mould System to make this fibreglass mould. Stay tuned for our next upcoming videos where we'll be using this mould to infuse a genuine carbon fibre component. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more composite videos like this.